PG Backweb is an open source Postgres backup web app. I've been using it for two months, maybe three months now on client projects and haven't had any problems in, in that time. It's pretty much a really nice front end for PG Dump. So that gives you an idea of how it's structured. The web UI is really clean. It's really intuitive. The UI even offers guides to demonstrate how to use the app for you, kind of like a tour that you might see on other software. One of my favorite features is listed right here. It supports local file system backends, so you can use those as backup targets anywhere on the file system. It also supports any kind of S3 target for a backup target. So that could be, for example, AWS S3, of course, they invented S3, but it, it could also be other S3 compatible backends, for example, DigitalOcean, I think they're called spaces. Also self-hosted options, even like min.io. Actually, I'm gonna demonstrate that to you. I'm gonna demonstrate a fully local setup for all of this. I'll demonstrate a local backup target as well as a min.io bucket running locally. If you look down further in the readme, they offer a snippet of Docker Compose. And actually I built a Docker Compose based on this as a starting point. So we'll demonstrate that shortly but first i want to demonstrate what the ui looks like so here's a screenshot as you can see the ui is pretty clear now you might be wondering why would i use this instead of my cloud provider's database backup offering i think if you want to use that that's excellent feel free to use those they manage everything for you it's really easy you can trust that the database will be backed up effectively this is just nice for people that Maybe you want something cross provider, provider agnostic rather, so you don't have to worry about running your backup offering within a single provider. And it's also for people that might want to run this locally, maybe in their home lab or something, or they might just want full control over their data, at least as much control as possible. So that's what led me to use this, and I've been really liking it. Now I'm gonna demonstrate the compose file I created so here's the compose file I created. And as stated before, it's built on that snippet we looked at in the PG Backweb repo readme. So that's linked here if you want to look at that as an original reference. I'll go through the key pieces of information here in this file. But first, I want to mention that this will be stored in a repo that will be linked below. So if you're interested in following along exactly, you don't have to copy what's on screen. You can just reference that repo. So the first service we have here is PG Backweb itself. This is the web UI. One thing I want to point out is that there's this Docker volume here. This is only needed for the local backup target. So that comment is that's outlined in this comment here. This encryption key I just generated with this open SSL command. I did point it out here, but this shouldn't be hard coded. You should use environment variables. This is just for testing purposes. That's just good, good practice for production, for security. One thing I want to talk about is the time zone. This is entirely optional. I set it to my time zone and it's it's useful for features in the UI. They'll be zoned to your time zone as well as the backup file names. Those will be zoned to your time zone as well. The other thing is a Postgres database for PG Backweb itself, which is kind of funny, but it just needs a way to manage its own state. And it happens to, by default, use Postgres for that. So that's what this is. It's just the database for PG Backweb. I also have this demo database, which is another Docker image based on the Postgres Docker image. This is filled out with some geography data already. I have the repo linked here if you want to look at more details of this. It's just nice having like a pre-seeded data database with actual data. This is actually linked in that repo. In fact, I discovered it from, from that repo, but the Postgres website has a list of other sample databases, so you can use that. Just for convenience, when we plug this database into PG Backweb, I have the connection string to use right here, so you can just copy that. At the time of recording, PG Backweb doesn't support Postgres 17 or higher, only 16 or lower, which is kind of unfortunate, but Anyways, that's why this is pinned to this version. This version uses Postgres 16. Finally, I have a min.io bucket. So for those that don't know, this is a self-hostable S3 compatible object storage. By S3 compatible, I mean that it offers a fully compliant S3 API. So you can use all of the S3 APIs you're familiar with 
to plug in directly to MinIO. And it also offers a web UI, which I will demonstrate shortly. This is just going to be used for that S3 target I talked about. And I also have volumes here mentioned above to demonstrate the local backup targets. So I'm going to show you both here. Running this is easy. All you need to do is make sure you're in the directory with the compose file. As you can see, I am right here. And then just do docker compose up. Okay, first I want to mention that this ran fast for me because I already had the container images locally pulled. Chances are this will take longer. You'll also notice I got an error here. This is because I have Postgres running as a local system service. If you see that this, this container here is taking the local port 5432, it's basically competing with the local service. So all I need to do is stop the local Postgres service. System control stop Postgres. Now Docker compose up should work. And it's looking good. We're getting some good logs here. You could look through the logs and figure out where to go in the browser. But you'll notice that in the PG Back Web service, I have the local port 8085 forwarding to the containers port 8085. This is the port that PG Back Web listens on. So I should just be able to go to localhost 8085. And there we are. We have PG Back Web. If this is your first time with an empty database, it'll prompt you to create a user. So I'll just do my name, test at email, and password. You can select the theme here if you'd like. I'll just keep it light. And then I'll click create user and continue. And then we'll log in with that user we just created. And here's the UI. You'll notice it's pretty empty because we haven't done anything with it yet, of course. So I'm just going to walk you through how to add a database, first of all. So these are databases that will be backed up by PG Backweb. And then we'll talk about destinations. Once we're in the Databases tab, this is where you can add databases to be backed up. So we'll click Create a Database here. And this is going to be this app database in the Compose file. So I'm just going to call it Local. You can call it whatever you want. And remember, this tag is running Postgres 16. So I'm going to pick Postgres 16. And then Connection String, I put that here in the comments. So you can just copy this right here, paste it in. And they offer this nice test connection button. Make sure it works. Looks good. Connection is successful, so we can save it. Now, what's cool is we can actually start creating backups for this already if we're just using local. So I'm going to demonstrate that. Destinations is just if you want to do an S3 target, which I will demonstrate. But first, we're going to just do a simple local backup. Before I fill this out, look to the right here. Remember that I have this backups directory here, a local mount. This folder will fill out with backups once we have this all set up. So I'll just call it local backup. Pick the database we just created. We're going to say, yes, this is a local backup. I'll have this run every, every day at midnight. So that's what this cron expression is saying. Notice my time zone is pre-filled because of the TZ variable in the compose file. And we'll just call this slash local. So this will be relative to this backups root directory here. We'll do 30 days of retention. This is just all just for demo. Activate some, so basically enable the backup. If you are familiar with PG dump, you'll recognize these options. I like to use the clean flag. You can do whatever you want. So please research these and figure out what's best for your, for your setup. So I'll click save. As you can see, we have this backup task basically ready to go. Remember, this will run at midnight, so we could wait, or the UI offers a way to just run it now. So I'm just going to click that, run backup now. You'll notice instantly it filled out this directory with the backup file. There you go. You just backed up a database locally on your file system. Now I'm going to demonstrate S3 with MinIO. So before we fill out the PG Backweb information for this, I'm going to create the bucket on MinIO. So we'll just take this URL here that is in the logs. That should take us to the web console. Notice this is on port 9001. It also runs the API service on port 9000. So just make sure you go to the correct port. I already have a root user created that's dictated by these environment variables. So I can log in with simply admin and password. 
we can create a bucket here. So this is exactly like S3. We'll just call it backups. Create bucket. By default, this is private. So we're going to create access keys again, just like AWS IAM for S3. So we'll go to access keys, create an access key. And it already fills these for us. If I remember correctly, it'll give them to you again when you like after you click create. So let's just call it backups. Backups. Create. Here it is for us. So I'm just going to temporarily paste these here for convenience. Now, if we go to object browser, you'll see this, this empty bucket is created earlier and we have access keys now so we can access this. So now we'll go back to PG Backweb and connect it up to min.io. So we will click create destination. I will call it min.io. The bucket name was backups that has to match. The endpoint is this here. I can't remember if it has to be 9,000 or 9,001. We'll figure that out. It might be 9,000. I was told somewhere a long time ago to default this to US East 1, if I remember correctly, for MinIO. I don't know the details of that. Something to look, for, look into, but we'll just see. You know, it either works or it doesn't. So I'll paste these, the access and secret key. Test failed. Oh, right. If this works. So I think this has to be MinIO colon 9000. There we go. So a couple of things I had to change there. First of all, it is port 9000. So I was incorrect the first time. The other thing is that it, you type in MinIO here. And the reason is because these are running in the same Docker network. So they're accessed by the service name here. So that's this like right here. MinIO matches this in the URL. The connection works now. So we know this is good. Click save. And there's our MinIO target. We created a local backup job, but we have not created a S3 backup job. So we're going to do very similar to before, but this time we're going to hook it up to MinIO. So I'll call it local S3 backup. Pick our database we created. Keep no because it is not a local backup now. It's going to a remote destination. MinIO, there's the destination we just created. I'll do the same cron expression as before every day at midnight. Cron is worth learning, by the way. It's very powerful technology. So this is relative to the bucket we created. So I'll just call it slash local. Similar, 30, activate, clean. Boom, save. Now we have this S3 backup job. And I will, so bucket is empty and I'll force it to run here. If I refresh. There we go. There's the backup. So now with this simple compose file, you have a demo of how to backup Postgres databases locally and to a S3 bucket. A couple of the things I want to demonstrate about the UI. So we already walked through. Well, let me show you summary now because now we have some actual data in it. Databases we looked at. This is where you create databases to be backed up. Destinations are S3 destinations for your backups. Backups are jobs or tasks to run your backups. You can create as many as you want with varying retention policies and so on. Executions will be an audit log of the backups. So you can see the two backups we ran were success successfully executed. Restorations is for restoring backups. I'm not going to demonstrate that. And then there's also webhooks. I'm not going to demonstrate this either. But if you don't know what webhooks are, they're basically ways to subscribe to events that happen in a system. For example, if something happens and PG Backweb has it coded to send out, then you can basically get notified. And then profile, which is just some information about yourself. And then about obviously has information about PG Backweb. So that's PG Backweb. If you have any questions, please let me know. Like I said, I've been using this for clients for a couple months at least, and it's been working just fantastic. And I love that I can run this anywhere I want. <laughs> I don't have to worry about using cloud providers backup offerings.